My name is Melanie Dugart, and here I present our paper, Co-located Distance, a fundamental challenge for the design of hybrid work technologies. Our motivation for the study was for us to learn how hybrid work can be defined, what are the unique characteristics of hybrid work, and how can we theorize hybrid work to make it help us when designing technologies for hybrid settings. This is relevant to understand how hybrid work is different from co-located cooperative work and distributed work, which is important as we assume that the future work practices will consist of a combination of co-located and distributed actors. Therefore, we sought to understand some of the fundamentals of how we can conceptualize hybrid work as a starting point for further empirical studies, guided by our research question. What are the characteristics of hybrid cooperative work that introduce unique design challenges to be met by cooperative technologies? We chose to base our study on past published literature. The goal was to learn from historic cases from the past and in this way get insights into different types of hybrid settings, which could also challenge our own idea of what hybrid work comprises. Our literature search was an iterative process where we continuously learned about different hybrid work arrangements and their diversity in scale, domain topics, and nature based on some of the existing literature on hybrid work. We to identify papers that study what we see as hybrid work, we had to develop a definition. We define hybrid work as situations where at least three actors are located at fewer geographical sites than the number of actors, but not all co-located, and all actors are mutually dependent in their work. So for example, if there are three actors, then there will be two contexts. The paper collection was limited to publications at CAI, CCW, Group, ECCW, and the Journal of CCW, which are all top venues covering work on cooperative technologies. Based on the definition, we selected papers that described empirical cases where at least three actors were involved in a common field of work while being geographically distributed across fewer geographical sites than the number of actors. And where the paper produced enough insights into the empirical data, which could allow us to conduct an analysis of the hybrid settings. In the identification of cases, we screened, grouped and regrouped the papers. And based on this process, we ended with 30 papers all describing some kind of work in hybrid arrangements. We divided the papers into four categories. Health, performance, non-office and office, which was further divided into papers with a system focus or with a collaboration focus. To conduct a more thorough analysis of the hybrid settings, we selected four papers, one from each category. When selecting the cases, we aim for significantly diverse empirical cases concerning scale, time sensitivity, professional work, technologies, and geography. Here we briefly present the four selected empirical cases. Within health, it is the emergency call case. This consists of eight actors distributed across four geographical sites and describes a situation where a factory worker was trapped under an engine and two fellow co-workers called the medical center for help. Within performance, we have the ice hockey case, which described live broadcasting of an ice hockey game. There are 16 actors involved, but mainly focus on eight of them who are all placed close to the arena, but either in a bus outside of the arena, close to the rink, or in a small studio. Within non-office, we have the oil production case, which has 52 actors onshore and 26 actors offshore, who have a long geographical distance, but likely consisting of several subgroups at both locations. And finally, there is the office work case describing four geographically distributed teams that have between 1 and 26 co-located actors. In the analysis of the selected empirical cases, we focused on first the hybrid work arrangement, asking who are the actors, what are their professional disciplines, and how do the actors unfold their activities during the cooperative work. Secondly, which cooperative technologies that are used in the different hybrid work arrangements, 
and thirdly, which breakdowns and successes that appear in the communication during the collaboration presented in the selected empirical cases. Based on our analysis, we found hybrid work to inherent all the challenges and aspects of both co-located cooperative work and distributed cooperative work. Therefore, we have visualized hybrid work as a subset of distributed work and cooperative work. But we also argue that some of these challenges increase in their complexity in a hybrid work setting. For example, when introducing co-located subgroups into the geographically distributed actors, introduce misalignment and asymmetry by default. We know that in cooperative work, unequal access to information to the other actors and their activities can be a boundary for creating common ground. And creating common ground can be challenging in all types of cooperative work. But we found that some of these challenges increase in hybrid settings because the condition by default is constrained by the unequal access since hybrid work arrangements always will consist of subgroups based upon some actors being co-located and others that are not. Additionally, we found a boundary that is unique for hybrid work, and this is what we suggest labeling co-located distance. In the selected empirical cases, we found situations where there were co-location without common ground. Co-located distance is therefore referring to this challenge in hybrid work where co-located actors don't share common ground despite they share the context. First, we will give an example of co-located distance from the emergency call case. There are two different co-workers at the factory who call the emergency call center for help. But they provide different descriptions of how the patient is and what happened. The operator who received the calls assumes that both co-workers and later also the ambulance driver have access to the same information because they are all at the same place as the patient. Therefore, the operators trust the information from all actors that communicate with them from the site where the emergency happened. But they end up making incorrect decisions in their diagnostic work because all the co-located actors didn't have access to the same information. We have a second example of co-located distance from the ice hockey game. Here, three of the actors were geographically co-located as they were all placed in a small van outside of the arena, so there were only a few meters between them. They interacted with different screen technologies and they didn't have access to the same information. And in this case, they communicated and collaborated as if they were not co-located, despite that they were in the same room. And this is two different examples of why we proposed the oxymoron co-located distance and suggested to be a way to remind us that when we design technologies for hybrid cooperative settings, we should not only focus on the boundaries across the different subgroups and contexts, but also the boundaries within the same context and the co-located actors. In this paper, we sought to learn how we can characterize hybrid work. We studied how the nuances of hybrid work make it different from distributed work by extending the vocabulary of how the challenges in the hybrid cooperative settings can be described. In this, we highlight some of the issues for further empirical research on the challenges and implications for design. From here, it's therefore relevant to continue work on identifying other challenges that uniquely appear in hybrid cooperative settings and how these findings can be considered when we design technologies supporting collaboration in hybrid environments.